Welcome back to our Ether Channel configuration here. We're going to be talking about PAGP, Cisco's proprietary port aggregation protocol. This is going to be a protocol, again, talking about our Ether channels, this is going to be a protocol that we can use to essentially automatically create and run our Ether channels. So we need to know some things about PAGP before we actually jump into the configuration. So PAGP is going to give us the ability to run eight physical ports on one logical port. Again, Cisco proprietary, so it's only going to work on Cisco to Cisco gear. The other thing that we need to be aware of in PAGP is essentially these two most important phases. So we're going to have auto and we're going to have desirable. What does that mean? Well, when we configure an ether channel in auto, we are going to wait for the other side to initiate a, in e the ether channel. So essentially, we can either have auto and desirable, or we can have desirable, desirable, but auto and auto will not work. Why? Because if I go in and I configure both sides to auto, auto, both sides are going to be waiting for the other to actually negotiate or initiate this PAGP uh, ether channel. Now, when we configure something in desirable, we are going to assume that there's going to be PAGP packets coming from the other side. This is actually not true. We, when we by default configure a PAGP ether channel, okay, we have what's called the silent or the non-silent mode, okay? The non-silent mode is going to wait for PAGP packets to be received because in the non-silent mode of PAGP, we're expecting that we're going to receive PAGP packets from the other side. By default, PAGP is going to run in what we call silent mode, which is, going, which is essentially saying that I don't expect to receive PAGP packets on the other side. So we need to be aware of this little switch inside of PAGP when we use this port aggregation protocol to configure our ether channels. Now, configuring these ether channels are going to work essentially the same exact way as static mode on, except they're going to do it with the transmission of PAGP packets back and forth. And I have a packet capture already, already um, uh, saved, so I'll show you that between these two switches. But let's get in and let's actually configure it and let's take a look at some of the command line pieces that we're going to need to know, especially if you're studying for something like your CCIE lab. So, let's jump into PAGP. Let me bring up my two switches, switches two and four. We're still using the same exact two switches. And let me just verify that this is not off the screen for you guys good. So let's wake this guy up, show interface trunk. We're trunking, we don't have an ether channel. Wake this guy up, show interface trunk. No ether channel, good. Config T, interface range, ethernet five zero to one. Oops, sorry. We'll do one. Same thing I did with on. I'm going to go ahead and shut down this particular interface. Config T, interface range. Actually, let me just verify. Do show run interface ethernet five zero. We're in trunk mode. Good. So we're going to go ahead and say interface range ethernet five zero to one. Shut these guys down. Let me just double check switch four. You can never be too careful. Do show run interface ethernet five zero to, we'll just say that. Can't do interface range. Okay, there we go. All right, so what we're going to do is on switch two, we're going to create a PAG P ether channel. So I'm going to say channel group 24. I already demonstrated that they don't need to be on, or that they don't need to be the same rather. Now I'm going to hit the question mark. The help menu here, and I wanted to show you guys this for a reason, because a lot of times folks that are studying for any type of Cisco exam get nervous because they can't remember the modes. Is it active desirable? Is it desirable auto? Is it active passive? You know, you forget which mode belongs to which protocol. The help menu makes it very, very easy for you. So if you're going to be dealing with PAGP, we're going to want auto or desirable. Again, Auto is going to be the mode that is going to essentially sit there and wait for the other side to initiate the PAGP ether channel. If I set it to auto to both sides, nada. If I set it to desirable on one side, then I'm going to have an ether channel because the desirable is going to attempt to reach out and try to establish the ether channel on that link. Now again, by default, we are going to not expect the pack by default. We're going to try to create this pack P or this ether channel. Once we actually receive any type of data, once the interface comes up, because we are essentially not expecting pack P on the other side. This is the default mode. The non silent mode is going to be what we're going to want. If we're only going to establish a pack P ether channel 
if and when we actually receive PAGP data packets. That's what it means, start negotiation only after the data packets are actually received. So we're going to go ahead on switch to, we're going to say channel group 24, we're going to say desirable, non-silent. All right, so we're going to say, I only want you to establish this ether channel once uh, we actually receive PAGP traffic. Let's say channel group 24, mode auto, and I'm going to use the same exact thing. I'm going to say non-silent, I'm going to say enter, and I'm going to go ahead and say no shut on both sides. Let's watch this guy come up. So we've no shut both ports. We're just on switch four here. Getting a small error message, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, we see port channel 24 has come up. We should see it on the same side. Good, do show ether channel summary. Now you'll notice a little bit different output here than what I showed you when we were dealing with static mode on. Now we have the uh, the installment of the actual protocol. So when I do show ether channel summary, it's actually showing me the protocol that I'm running to establish my ether channel, okay? Now PAGP is going to have its own set of commands that we're going to take a look at in a minute. If I say do show ether channel detail, notice now that in, I'm just going to exit out of here because I just wanted to show you that in the protocol, I now have the installment again of PAGP show PAG P and now I have these different output commands for PAG P itself that I'm going to want to take a look at. Let's just take a look at 24. Oops, sorry. I'm going to want, uh, let's just say counters. Now, now I'm just taking a look at 24. You could just say show PAG P counters and that's going to give me the same output. I just wanted to identify the individual ether channel. If you guys are running multiple ether channels, in your network, you can specify it just to the one ether channel that you'd like to take a look at. I just wanted to show you that and it's the same output for me because I'm only running that one ether channel. So when I look at this, I have my sent, I have my received, I don't have any errors, I don't have any flush sent, so this looks good. This is proper output. I'm gonna say show PAG P and again, I'm just gonna say 24 and I'm gonna use the neighbor command. Now, when I look at the neighbor, the neighbor is going to tell me who are my neighbored with? What are the ports that I'm connected to? What is the switch name? And what is the MAC address of my partner? And then it's also going to tell me the age and also the, um, the partner the, the partner interfaces that I'm connected to. So when I say show PAGP neighbors, I'm actually getting this information in between my two neighbors in the exchange of my PAGP packets that are going back and forth, my PAGP messages, I'm actually getting some neighbor information. And look, it tells me that my partner flags are devices sending a slow hello, that's my S, and C, device is in a consistent state, all right? So, so this is, again, proper output. This is what I should see. Show PAGP, and I wanna use the internal command this time. I'll leave off the, um, I'll leave off the, individual user channel. Now take a look at my, my PAGP output here. I have two pieces of information that I really want to uh, hone in on at the moment before we jump into a, a packet capture. And, and this would be the same on switch too if I jumped in here and said show PAGP internal. Okay, this is the, essentially the same output that I'm seeing. Notice how I have a hello timer also. I can change the hello timer and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But the two pieces that I want to really identify to you are the PAGP priority and the learn method. The PAGP priority, the port priority, I can actually adjust the priority of an individual port and dictate where essentially I want to send more traffic to or who is more desirable in my particular configuration. So I can say config T, interface Ethernet 5.0 and say PAGP and notice I'm going to have this port priority command. I can adjust the priority to whatever I want and essentially dictating who is going to have better, uh, it's almost like cost, right? Who's going to have the better um, priority for my traffic. The other thing that I want to show you is the learning method. Now, by default, PAGP is going to learn the destination MAC address. It's going to learn the, I'm sorry, the source of the traffic. So the source MAC address, PAGP is going to learn this on the 
virtual interface or the ether channel interface, but I can change this. Suppose I wanted PAGP to send out traffic based on the interface that PAGP received it on. I could change the learn method and I could say physical port. Okay. Once I change this to the physical port, now PAGP is going to bark at me in a, in a few seconds here. Maybe it won't, but let's just do show PAGP internal and you'll notice how now on this particular port I'm going to set it back before PAGP has a hissy fit which looks like it, it may be starting to do. Um, again going back to setting my ether channels all the ports have to be the same well now I have an in I have a, a misconfiguration here because I have one port that's learning the MAC addresses the source MAC addresses on the physical port when the rest of it's learning it on the uh, the aggregate port but I want to show you that you, these are things that you can change within PAGP and here we go we're, we're having a hissy fit um, so notice now that I have, I'm learning it based on the physical port, whereas this guy's going to say any, which is going to be the aggregate port. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to just say aggregate. Do, oh, I'm sorry. Let me hit enter. There we go. And we're going to say learn method aggregate port and say do show PAG P internal. And now they're set back to any. So changing the port priority is essentially going to dictate which port do I want to be preferred within PAGP. And changing the learn method is going to dictate into PAGP who do I want you to, um, who do I want you to essentially, how do I want you to learn these source MAC addresses that are coming into these particular links. So by default, again, remember, we're going to learn it based on the aggregate port or that virtual interface, whereas I can change that to the physical port. So as the traffic comes in, I'm going to learn that source address on this physical port, which means that my, my, my return traffic may go or will most likely go back through that same link because I've told it I want you to learn the source MAC address from this traffic on this physical link. So these are options that we can change. But if you change them, you can see based on the output that I have up on the screen here that they need to be consistent across uh, both sides. You can't have one set to one way and the other set to another way. All right, they have to be the same. Let me bring in my packet capture here. And this is, this is a, a, um, a configuration that I did just a few minutes before this video in PAGP because I don't want to wait for the packet capture to run and all that kind of stuff. So I want to filter it and have it prepared for you. What I want to show you here is notice how in this packet capture we have two PAGP messages, essentially hello messages, that were sent out from this MAC address 0105. And if I take a look at switch 2... curious about something was it 105 yeah 105 there we go so notice how notice how this it tells it that this was the sort port of this particular traffic so we know that switch 2 at this point was set to desirable how do I know that because if I look, and I look at the amount of traffic that I received, I received two from switch two, and then one from switch four. Let's actually take a look at the packet itself, and let's see if I can prove to you that switch three was set to auto mode. Notice down here, I have, first of all, I have a lot of output inside of my my uh, my pag p itself right so i have my flags which let me show you that in a minute my local device id was 0 100 my port priority was was 128 so i have my i have all my output all my uh my flags in pag p but the one i really want to want to show you is this guy here when i explain this flag it tells me that my auto mode was desirable when i come down here to this particular switch it tells me that my auto mode was yes and notice here that it said I was in auto mode, which is my 0x02. Um, so it tells me here that my auto mode was set to yes, whereas on this switch, it was set to desirable. So inside my capture, I can actually see that one side was set to desirable, the other guy was set to auto. And again, I can see all the different flags, you know, specifically just pointing out that hot standby priority that I showed you that you can set in your ports, essentially saying, I want traffic to go to this guy as a hot standby, as opposed to this guy. You can set that on your, um, in your configuration. And then here's the transmission of all our PAGP packets as we, as we continue down. 
Okay, so this was our actual, uh, these were our actual PAGP messages that were being sent back and forth between our two different neighbors, okay? So PAGP is not incredibly complex when it comes to configuring it. Again, I just want to show you that configuration. Show run interface uh, Ethernet 5.0. All we're essentially doing is setting one guy to desirable, the other guy to auto, or we can set the desirable, desirable. Be aware and don't forget about the non-silent option. The non-silent option, I'm just giving you a quick recap. The non-silent option is going to establish this Ether channel once we've actually um, received PAGP traffic coming back. Okay, so this is it for PAGP guys and I'll see you with LACP.